Good morning, church. Can I invite all of us to stand to our feet? So, what day is it today? What day is it today? Okay, it's Sunday and it's Christmas Eve. Woo! So we know that Christmas is tomorrow, but I think today, even as you gather here in church on a Sunday, it's equally important because we are ushering in the Christmas spirit for everyone, and we are here, you know, constantly serving God and being in His house, and there's no place better to be, right? Amen? So can I just get us all to do this? You know, Christmas, we like to wish each other. Can we just go around and wish two to three people Merry Christmas Eve? Don't forget the Eve, okay? So go around, shake someone's hand, give them a hug, and wish them a Merry Christmas Eve. Wow, isn't it so good to see a church that's being well, so welcoming to one another? be in your house today serving you. We thank you that we can give you all the praise on this Merry Christmas Eve that we are celebrating today, oh God. So God, I just pray, oh God, that as we worship you today, as we listen to the sermon, oh God, that you will be with us, oh God. So Lord, I commit the rest of the time into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. and all the praise that he deserves because he deserves 
all our praise and all our worship. Amen. Isn't he just the greatest and isn't he just the king of all kings? So Lord, we come to you and we give you all that we have this morning, oh Lord.
a king seated among us let every heart receive him now where there is praise he will inhabit 
and there will be grace and mercy all around every burden will be lifted in his presence every trophy will be laid out at his feet there is a name that reigns above all others jesus christ the king above all kings unto the land honor and glory what is he who overcame buried in shame risen in power he is alive the stone is rolled away all our worship we belong to him forever that is conquered and our Savior holds the keys. There is a name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King of all kings. It won't be long. We will be whole and then every tear he'll wipe away we'll be at home the war will be over soon we will meet our savior face to face and every burden will be lifted in his presence every trophy will be laid on at his feet there is a name that reigns above all others jesus christ the king of the world and all our worship will belong to you forever holy holy for your is the name the ways of all others Jesus Christ the King of all kings and all our worship will belong to you forever holy holy for all eternity The King of all kings, Jesus Christ, the King of all kings, Jesus Christ, the King of all kings. Oh, come, let us adore.
thank you for this amazing time that we can come and worship you, O oh Lord, in praise and in song, Lord. Truly, O oh God, that you, are, you alone are worthy, O oh God. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. And you alone, O oh God, are the God that we worship, O oh God, this Christmas season, O oh Lord. And God, even as we have given, O oh God, in our singing, Lord, as we have come, O oh Lord, we want to give, O oh God, in our offering as well, Lord. So God, even as we go into this time, Lord, I pray that you'll bless every cheerful giver. Lord, I just pray, oh God, that every cent and dollar that we give, oh God, will not be given in vain, oh God, that we won't do it out of a routine, but we remember, oh God, what you have given to us, oh Lord. And Lord, that we remember, oh God, that we are investing into your kingdom, oh Lord. So God, even as we go into this time, oh God, would you bless every cheerful giver, oh God. And even in this season of giving, oh Lord, may we experience the joy within that, Lord. Commit all this into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, church. As so we give our offering, um, there will be ushers passing around the offering bag. Um, but there's also QR codes scan that you can scan over everywhere. You can use not only touch and go, but do it now. So nowadays, with QR codes, it's very advanced. So you can use any do it now that you need to give your offering. So I'm going to give you guys um, a while uh, before we move on. I think we'll move on at, uh, as you give as well. Uh, don't worry, we'll just continue with announcements as the offering bag is being passed around. Um, first, we would like to invite newcomers. Woo! Any newcomers in our midst? Right now, I have one card with me. Um, it's Dinai Shurkat, okay? He is invited, invited by Mother Maria. So, are you here? Over there, yes. Can we all go around and shake his hand and welcome him? Welcome to Glad Tidings Clang. We are glad to see you here on this Merry Christmas Eve. Or is it just Christmas Eve? I don't need to say Merry, right? <laughs> Oopsie. Okay, yeah. Glad to see you join us on this Christmas Eve. Um, but yes, if you are joining us online for the first time as well, or you're here for the first time, uh, you did not get a card, uh, we also invite you to scan this QR code. What this will do is that we'll be able to connect with you, to introduce you and connect you with this church so that you can possibly make it your home church as well. Alright. Um, yes, so we're going into announcements and the first one is... Christmas! Woo! Christmas is when? Yeah, it's tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Alright, so... Today is not Christmas, it's Christmas Eve, but I'm so glad we're all here making the time to be in church as well. But tomorrow, tomorrow, this is like, you know the Christian calendar, like our big ones, you know, the Christmas, the Easter. So this is a really, really great opportunity to invite not only your friends, but your family members to church. I want to encourage you all, um, we've handed out some cards and we've got an amazing lineup for you. We've got performances, we've got food downstairs as well. We also have games. So if you have any niece and nephews, there's going to be games with prizes. Okay, the prizes are really cool. I went and get them and it was like, whoa, I also want to win them as well. So it's a great opportunity to invite all your friends because there's going to be so much happening. But more importantly, the gospel will be shared and we will be able to see hopefully more people come into the kingdom. So can I get everyone's uh, help with that? Let's invite our friends. We still got one more day. We can invite them through WhatsApp, send them a text, give them a call, or maybe even just drive in front of the house and ding dong the bell and then just bring them to church, okay? All right, so Christmas is tomorrow. Don't forget to be there. 10 a.m., okay? 10 a.m., okay? Um, next. All right, Royal Rangers. Can I get a shot on the Rangers? Woo! All right. So Christmas, then after that, what happens after that? New Year's. And after New Year's, we're going to have our first Sunday of the month, which will be 7th of January. 
uh, Rangers will be happening having their homecoming 2024. So it's kind of like um, so much things lined up for that as well. There's graduation. There will be a program sharing, fun and fellowship, and there will also be light refreshments uh, provided as well. So we invite everyone as well. If you again, if you have nieces, nephews, or your own children. You want them to get involved in Rangers. This is going to be a really great opportunity to get them involved uh, because it will be a very a time of fellowship and they will be able to be le learn more about the program as well, okay? So, yes, Rock Rangers Homecoming, 7th of January, okay? First Sunday of the year, 2024. And it's going to be 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. It will be in MPH 1 and 2. Alright? Cool, everyone? Um, next, last announcement. Okay, so this is a finance and family seminar okay this will be happening in 2024 uh, it's going to be happening on uh, 13 January 2024 and we have invited speakers Dr. Charlie and Catherine Tay if I'm not wrong uh, based on their bio data that I've read they are very experienced in the finance industry and as well as early childhood so combined together they'll be able to uh, conduct this seminar on finance and family so we invite anyone who has um, maybe you are a young family or you're already the family is a bit older so you also can but anyone who has families you want to uh, learn more about finance and also um, kind of raising children as well uh, how that plays a part with one another we invite you to come for this event so if you are interested do find uh, brother Terence Lim or sister Feelin or if you really want to you like okay I want to register immediately you can scan the QR code and register right I think that is all the announcements that we have for today. So let me invite our speaker. He is no stranger to us. We are inviting Reverend Dr. Stanley Lim to come and preach. Yeah, let's share the word. Let's welcome him. Amen. Thank you, General. Praise the Lord. It's again my joy to be here with you on this Christmas uh, Eve season. Uh, great encouragement to bring your friends. Uh, uh, when you ting tong their bell, I think it's good to give them uh, an advance notice. Some may appear in their pajamas, right, uh, uh, responding to your ting tong. <laughs> right, so it's good to just give them an advance notice that hey, I'm bringing you to to uh, uh, Christmas service. Right, so get ready. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So it's good to be uh, found in God's house, and there's, there's so many of you here. I thought there'd be a quite a, a number of you will, will skip this Eve service and then just come uh, for your. Christmas service itself, but it's so good to see so many of you here as well this morning. Praise God. This morning, I want to entitle my message as Missing Jesus at Christmas. Sometimes, you know, when you announce a, a title, people will be wondering, people will be thinking, what are you going to talk about Missing Jesus at Christmas, all right? Uh, but, you know, you notice that as we approach Christmas, you know, preparations of all sorts of Christmas celebration are in full swing, you know, uh, uh, malls have already been fully decorated, you know, carols have been sung, you know, at, uh, at, at some malls over the weekends and so forth. My family and I took opportunity to visit a mall that was uh, uh, quite near to our home and, uh, uh, and they advertised, you know, uh, that, that carolers would be coming and we found out that carolers were coming from Kingdom City and so we thought, you know, maybe we should go and just watch this uh, caroling, uh, you know, and see what kind of a new presentation or or what, what kind of a, a, a play they're going to put up, what kind of worship songs they're going to sing and so on and so forth. And, uh, and lo and behold, you know, the one hour presentation, half an hour of carols, and then a half an hour of a contemporary uh, display or a contemporary acting of the Christmas story. Uh, was 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 done and, and and we thought it was quite a quite a, a new idea to present you know because everybody was just you know uh, so caught up with with their play and, and even the, our cousins you know wearing their, their tudongs you know were crowded there to watch the play but the whole entire advent story was really displayed and so it was a great opportunity uh, to tell others about Jesus in a in a in a contemporary and uh, uh, non-threatening uh, manner. Even though the celebrations and uh, uh, are in full swing, the irony is that we usually end up doing a lot of stuff in Jesus' name, but not really spending any time with Jesus Himself. Always remember the centrality of Christmas is Jesus. The centrality of our Christmas are not the gifts. The centrality of our Christmas celebrations are not 
the Christmas tree and not even the lightings. My daughter took a special uh, trip to Singapore thinking that Singapore will be grandly displaying, you know, all their Christmas lightings at Orchard Road and she was very, very disappointed because the portion of lightings was just only a very small part of Orchard Road. We end up exhausted making all those preparations, setting up the trees. As a matter of fact, uh, confession is good for the soul, not so good for our reputation. We don't even have a Christmas tree in our home this year. Uh, the Christmas tree is always very fun for the children when they are young. You know, they like to put up, you know, this and that and uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, at, uh, my wife and I at our grand old age, you know, are getting tired setting up Christmas tree and then putting it down, you know, because our our children are no longer the small ones that like to put up all these kind of things, you know, all around. And so we thought, let's let's give up. <laughs> let's celebrate Christmas with one or two misoke, you know, in our home and so on and so forth. So we end up exhausted, go home, uh, and and then come, uh, uh, you know, to celebrate, watch night service, and then wake up to a new year. That would be a typical uh, time that we spend during the Christmas season. But here's a thought. How about spending some time with Jesus this Christmas? I want to go back. I want to take you to go back to the passage uh, where the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, you know, encountered Jesus. And I want you to look at some, you know, significant uh, happenings, you know, when the two disciples were so disappointed because they just come from a discouraging scenario where Jesus body was not found all right and they were journeying to Amos in a very discouraged mode and you know and, and, and so on and so forth and so I'm gonna ask you to help me to uh, to follow along in the reading in Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35 and I've asked the uh, uh, media team to put this up in the slide so that you can follow along in the reading Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35, and I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. If you kindly follow along in your uh, Bibles, all right, and uh, as well as the slides on the uh, screen there. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were thinking, talking about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleophas, replied, you must be only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. Verse 19. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth. They said, He was a prophet who did powerful miracles and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing. And they had seen angels who told them that Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see. And sure enough, his body was gone. Just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have uh, would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory then jesus took them 
through the writings of Moses and all the prophets explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And by this time, they were nearing the mess and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on. But they begged him, stay the night with us since it is getting late. So he went home with them. And as they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave the bread. And he broke it and gave it to them. And suddenly their eyes were open and they recognized him. And at that moment he disappeared. And they said to each other, Didn't our hearts burn within us as we talked, as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There, they found the eleven disciples and the others who had gathered with them, who said, The Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. Our Father, we thank you this morning even for the worship of your people. Even as we consider your word, as we look into your word, we ask, dear God, once again that you will open our eyes, that you will, we will see the truth of your word. We will see light, dear Lord Jesus, even as we enter into Christmas tomorrow. Father, we ask, dear Lord Jesus, oh God, Father, that you will begin to, to reveal the truth to us, dear God, so that our hearts indeed will be set free from our naiveness and our ignorance. And so we thank you. We ask, oh God, Lord, that you'll breathe life into your precious words even now as we turn to hear it from you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Three very important things that we need to consider as we miss Jesus at this Christmas. Number one is, we need to meet Jesus in the company of friends. We know that there were two disciples that were that were walking together and suddenly Jesus walked with them. Jesus appeared and walked with them. You know, at this particular Christmas, I want to suggest to you, you know, that, uh, that besides having meals, you know, uh, together as a family, invite some friends along with you, you know, uh, close members, close family friends to share life-giving conversations about Jesus. To do, to do disciples recognize Jesus after they had shared a meal with him, as we have just read a moment ago in verse 30 and 31. As we share food, share life, chat about Jesus, chat about Jesus. I think it is, it is really a, a, uh, a fruitless exercise to eat during Christmas season and not talk about the star of our makan session together. The star is Jesus. The star is the one that is central to the message of Christmas. Alright? I think, you know, friends are most, I would say, uh, uh, open during this time of uh, Christmas season. And they are most open, you know, to your invitation. They are most open to your conversation about church, about Christ and so on and so forth. And so here is an opportunity. Why wait till Easter to come or Good Friday to come to talk about Jesus and to invite them to church? And so Christmas, you know, meeting Jesus in the company of friends is the best way for evangelism. And I'm so thankful to the Lord that the Lord has opened up many, many opportunities for you to invite friends to hear about Jesus. We had some, some months ago, uh, Eddie Young that came for the healing uh, service, all right? And now, you know, uh, Christmas is here. And so we want to really encourage you. I want to really encourage you that you make a very, very special effort. God will always bless efforts that you put in. Prayers that you have prayed and labors that you have put in, even in the preparation of your food for perhaps, you know, the meals that you'll be uh, preparing, you know, to invite your friends, you know, to come to your home. 
So as we share food, share life. Share about how you have been encountering Jesus in the year that is passing. Share Thanksgiving items. What a good way to recollect the goodness of God at Christmas time. You know, to recollect back what God has done for you and to you, you know, uh, since the, 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 the start of January of 2023. Counting the blessings and name them one by one. Instead of remembering all the bad things and all the complaints, start a Thanksgiving session in your meal time. Is it, is it good, you know, to, to, to remember God and to, and to be grateful and to be thankful and instead of just remembering all the uh, sour moments and difficult moments and sorrowful moments uh, uh, that we have done. But even in those Thanksgiving moments too, you need to also recall how God has brought you out of those painful moments as well. How God, through His healing, through His, you know, uh, 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 reconciliation, through His, uh, uh, the process of grief has also healed your hearts as well. Now that's an item for, for Thanksgiving as well. I'm quite sure some of you, you know, in the year 2023, you have lost a loved one. You know, it is good to recall how you miss your loved one and how God has actually helped you through the grieving process, granting healing to that wounded heart, that person that you have missed so much. Amen. And what a great opportunity also to pray for one another. Amen. To pray for one another. Just uh, on Friday evening, uh, some old friends, you know, of ours from our former church, you know, invited us for uh, a, a meal, you know, in a Japanese restaurant, and there were six of us there, and we had a great time, you know, uh, tasting the, the food and recollecting and asking, how are you, you know, how are you doing? And one of them, we didn't even know that this particular sister went through such a challenging time in 2023. You know, she had an angioplast, you know, and then she had uh, 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 stomach refluxes, you know, she was admitted to the hospital and, and hearing her story, you know, my wife and I were just so amazed, you know, that she has gone through so much of suffering. But yet, as we close, you know, our meal time together, we were grateful and thankful that we had an opportunity to meet and we had an opportunity to pray. In fact, we were the last ones uh, to leave the restaurant, the entire restaurant was empty, you know, and uh, and the and the waiters and waitresses were just moving around, trying to, you know, uh, physically show to us that no, hey, can you please leave, lah? We're gonna go home. <laughs> but we took time to pray. The six of us, you know, we took time to pray for one another. We took time to pray for blessing. We took time to pray for healing and good health, even for that sister that shared uh, shared with us. Then another couple shared with us how, you know, they, they lost their baby, you know. Uh, the baby was born with, with, with a lot of challenges, you know, and, and just as she has turned two, you know, she passed away. And, and, and they shared to us that, that, that story and, and, and how they are still going through grieving. In fact, you know, the, the, the wife, you know, shared with us, said, I, I, I think I'm going to, you know, go to some, some, some grief counseling. I'm going to enroll myself in some grief counseling so that I can get you know, fully well overcoming this, this uh, uh, difficult time that we went through early in the year. So it's a great time, my friends, that, you know, as you begin to look for these opportunities, I'm sure that there will be many, many friends that you uh, encounter this Christmas season. They will, they will be thankful that they have met you, that you have become an agent of healing, that you have become an agent of encouragement, you have become an agent where you brought much joy and hope to them. Isn't Christmas a season of hope for all of us? Amen? Give hope. Give hope to someone in need today. Commit yourself to walk together in the year ahead. And in our friendship, we encounter afresh the presence and the friendship of Christ. Let's discover afresh the presence and the friendship of Christ. Secondly, let's meet Jesus in the Word. Not only do we meet Jesus in the company of friends, but let's meet Jesus in the Word. Jesus spent most of his 
walk with the two disciples showing where the scriptures have talked about him. You know, these two disciples were kept from recognizing Jesus. But as they were walking, you know, Jesus was just sharing scriptures with them and so on and so forth. And still, you know, they were not really fully, uh, uh, didn't fully come to knowledge that the person that is journeying with them is Jesus. And as we were watching the play, you know, by the, by the, the, the carolers of uh, Kingdom City, you know, our, our two um, granddaughters were seated, you know, on the, we, we went to the first floor because it's easier to view, you know, because they're so short and you know, all the people crowded around, you know, the, the center stage. And uh, so we went up so that they can have a good view of, the, of what's happening. And so the whole story was told and then, the, you know, my, my daughter was with them and uh, their parents were with them. And as the, the play was being, uh, was being the, portrayed by the actors and actresses, they took time to explain the scriptures. They took time to explain that Mary was pregnant with Mary miraculously and the birth of Jesus Christ. And, and the scriptures was explained to them even though there were no turning of the pages of the Bible to my two granddaughters. And they understood the Advent story. I think Christmas is a great time for us to turn our hearts or to turn the hearts of the people in our presence to the Word of God. What is the Word of God? The Word of God is the truth of God. Truth that is told did not to be defended. Amen? Truth stands alone by itself. Truth will open up the door of light into the hearts of people. And so as we explain scriptures, as we explain the Word of God to people, we trust that God will show up. We trust that God will reveal Himself. We trust that God will appear to people. Amen? He is God. He uses us. He uses our mouth. He uses our presence to introduce Him to others. That's all we need to do. We don't have to do anything more or anything less because it is the work of the Spirit to convict and to bring people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus knew that a time was coming that He would go back to the Father. Now remember, Jesus has just risen from the dead, but He has not ascended to the Father yet. All right? In fact, this is one of the many incidences of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right? The, 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 two, the, the two disciples on the road of Damascus uh, to Amos, you know, is, is one of the many incidences that Jesus appeared to reveal that He has conquered death, that He has overcome death. Praise God. So, he knew that a time was coming that he would go back to the Father. The disciples would no longer have access to him physically till he returned. Till then, they like us will only be able to meet Jesus in the Word. As you explain the Word, the Word becomes flesh. The Word becomes truth to those that hear you. Perhaps at Christmas, meal suggest, suggest, suggested a birth earlier on you know, uh, uh, in meeting with friends, a Christmas passage could be, could be read and time taken for a Christmas message to sink in to our friends. So don't just eat, don't just have a good time, but perhaps turn to a passage of Scripture in the presence of your non-believing friends or your pre-believing friends. Read a passage of Scripture so that at least they know this is what has, been, has happened to the Lord, all right, in the, in, the, in, the, in the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So make the Word a part of your Christmas celebration. Amen. Make the Word a part of your celebration. Not just the gaiety, not just the lightings, not just the, the you know, the, the, the excellent dishes that are before you, but make the Word clear as you read it out to your friends. And finally, meet Jesus in witness. Meet Jesus in witness. Any real encounter with Jesus will lead to a deep desire to share Him with others. If you have a truly a, a, a life-changing encounter with Jesus Christ, you would always want to find an opportunity to share Christ with others. You will always want to find an opportunity to share His love with others. 
because of what the kind of experience that you've gone through, you want to share that life with them as well. I'm quite sure that, you know, many of you would have heard testimonies of, uh, you know, of Francis, uh, uh, what is his sisters, uh, brothers from the disciples' house and how God has touched their lives too, isn't it? Amazing story, amazing stories. And sometimes, you know, I wonder, you know, if without Christ, where would some of, uh, some of these former uh, 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 inmates, you know, former drug addicts would be if without Christ Jesus. The two disciples from the Emmaus Road couldn't wait to tell the other disciples that they had met Jesus while they were journeying towards Emmaus. They just couldn't wait. Because why? Jesus appeared to them for a little while and at the breaking of the bread, their eyes were open and lo and behold, Jesus went missing just like that. So it was an encounter that they could not wait to share with others. And I pray and I sincerely ask that you would be quick to share your encounter with Jesus. How you have met Him, how He has changed you and transformed you. This is something that people cannot challenge you. You know, sometimes I met some Christians who say, you know, Pastor, I, I'm not learn enough of the Bible. I've not studied enough of the Bible to share Christ. You know, I'm so afraid that people will, you know, share, uh, uh, will challenge me on certain scriptures and I'm not equipped to answer some of their uh, queries. Well, let me tell you this. Your life-changing story, your transformation is something that they cannot challenge. Amen? They can never challenge how you have been delivered from your habits, how you have been delivered from a moment of death and brought back to life, how you have been delivered. I've got a good friend who is now a pastor in Perth, you know, he's a, he's a long distance runner, you know, in the, in the SEP Games, the Southeast Asia Peninsula Games, formerly now called the Sea Games. You know, he was running in the finals of that, of that race and as he crossed the finishing tape, you know, he collapsed in a pool of blood and he was brought to the hospital and the doctors examined him on the uh, on, on hospital bed and his lungs were totally, totally scarred with tuberculosis. And the doctor says, there's very little that I can do right now. In fact, you just, you just stay there. What he's trying to tell him is just stay there and wait to die. Nah. You know? And uh, friends have told him about Jesus. Friends have told him about the miraculous touch of Jesus. And so as he was lying on that bed, you know, in the hospital, he talked to God. He talked to Jesus. He said, Jesus, if you're really that real as what my friends have told you about, this is a time that I'll need you to touch me. This is a time that I need you to heal me. And as he prayed that prayer, he fell into a deep sleep. And in that sleep, the Lord did a deep surgery. The Lord removed his diseased lungs and replaced them with baby lungs. As he woke up, he looked at the, you know, at the, at the, at the roof and he got up from the bed and he started walking. And the nurses came to him and said, No, hey, what are you doing? Why are you walking about? He says, I... I I feel fine. I feel okay. No, you are dying. He says, no, I don't feel that I'm dying. And so they called the doctors. The doctors came in and wheeled him and they x-ray his lungs again. And the doctors were surprised. They says, these are baby lungs. These are very, you know, lungs you know, that, that, that you would find in the newborn babes. The Lord replaced the diseased lungs and gave him a new set of lungs. And ever since the Lord touched him, he has been going around preaching the gospel. He, you know, he, he, he was our classmate in Bible school and, uh, you know, and uh, when he graduated, you know, he says, oh, now it's my time to be free from all these studies because uh, he was one of the oldest in our class, you know. He came in, he, he was he's married, he came in and the uh, oldest and he was always struggling with studies. And so now it's the time to just uh, quit my studies and go out there and really preach the gospel. And uh, the Lord has, healed, has used him in the, in the healing ministry. You know, many have been healed under this ministry. And today he's pastoring a thriving church in, the, uh, in Perth. 
So he is one that is always eager to share of the transformation. But we don't need such kind of dramatic, you know, uh, happenings, a story in order to be an effective witness. A simple testimony of you, how God has transformed you, changed you. Perhaps, you know, just a simple uh, deliverance from, from cigarettes, from smoking can help somebody. You know, uh, a, a lifestyle that has been changed. You know, perhaps, you know, you, you, know you, you, you used to be lying. You, know, you used to tell a lot of lies and how God touched you and you stopped lying. And perhaps, you know, I mean, whatever it is, but you, you know, you know that God has transformed you and that you're wanting to share this with others so that they will also experience a similar touch, a similar transformation. Amen. Praise the Lord. When we go in His name to share His love, we will meet Him again. We will meet Him again. In verses 36 to 43 of the same passage in Luke chapter 24. Let me read to you again in 36 to 43. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus Himself was suddenly standing there among them. Notice, Jesus did the disappearing act. When, the disciple, when the, these two uh, uh, disciples from Emmaus returned back to Jerusalem and met with the other disciples and they were talking to them about how Jesus appeared to them, Jesus made His appearance a second time. This time in the presence of the other disciples. And this is what Jesus said to them. Peace be with you, he said. But the whole group was, you know, was startled and frightened, thinking that they had seen a ghost. And Jesus asked, why are you frightened? Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands, look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. And he further says, touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. And as he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Hallelujah. When you speak, when you are willing to be that witness, Jesus will make his appearance. Amen. Jesus will make his appearance not in person, but perhaps in, you know, in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the, in the person of the Holy Spirit, bringing conviction of the heart that has been listening to you, sharing about your transformation. I'm very sure there are many in our midst you have a story to tell. And every one of us here seated have a story to tell. Not as a dramatic as being risen of uh, uh, rose from the dead and so on and so forth, but a story that is authenticated by your changed life. Amen. By your changed life. A quiet personal visit may do much more even, much more than asking friends to a Hollywood level Christmas production. Like Jesus, we should lead with questions. Perhaps it is even at this Christmas season, season that we will begin, that we will ask questions of our friends, you know, uh, what kind of struggles they are going through, and perhaps leading them in a time of prayer will help them to empty their hearts, will help them to relieve them of their burdens and their fears as well. Amen. We live in a lonely, impersonal world. In Christ. God came to us in person. Christ is Emmanuel. We've been singing this throughout this Christmas season. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with us. This Christmas, do not neglect the Lord whose birth that we are celebrating. Do not make Jesus go missing this Christmas. Don't replace Jesus with all, you know, the presence, the passing of presence. Don't uh, uh, miss out Jesus in the midst of all the merrymaking 
but make Jesus the centrality, the centrality of this Christmas season. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you meet Jesus? Will you meet Jesus in the company of your friends? Will you meet Jesus with the word? Will you meet Jesus in witness this season? Remember, as the song says, there's 12 days of Christmas. Christmas don't end on the midnight of Christmas Day. Christmas just began. There are many more opportunities for you, for you to share this Christmas and to let your friends and your loved ones to meet Him at this Christmas. Amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is worthy, is worthy of our conversation. Friends, please do not be shy, do not be ashamed of letting or sharing Christ at this Christmas because He is worthy of your sharing. He's worthy. He came as a babe so that he could be identified with you in humanity. He went through all the various different struggles and limitations like any one of us here that are seated in this auditorium. He suffered. He was shamed. He was criticized. He was spat on. And yet, he is one that is most deserved to be discussed at the table, at our meal time. I pray God that you would give strength and courage to all of us here at this Christmas season, dear Lord, that we would share Christ boldly, that we would share Christ, Lord, without an apology, and to make him known to our friends and to our loved ones and to our colleagues and to those that are in contact with us. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. This morning, I want to give you an opportunity, even right now, to tell Jesus, Jesus, help me to be bold, help me to be courageous, help me to be fearless, dear Lord, to share Christ with somebody, to share Christ with my good friend, my neighbor. There's still time, even, like what I have challenged you over the weekend, you know, over that particular weekend where Eddie Young was coming. There's still time for you to invite them. There's still 24 hours or 22 hours left for you to invite your friends for the Christmas service tomorrow. This morning, you're saying to me, Pastor, yes, I think I still have time to do so. I still have time to lift up that phone, to go to that friend's house and to extend that invitation to them. You're saying to me, Pastor, I want, I want to take that opportunity to share Christ and to help my friends to meet Jesus at this season, at this Christmas season. If you are saying that to me and you are wanting to believe God that you who will pour His boldness, He will give you that courage to invite your friends and you're saying to me, Pastor, give me that boldness and that strength right now. I want to see you lift up that hand and I want to pray for you that God will give you that open door, you know, to bring that friend and to invite that friend to come even for tomorrow's service. Is there somebody here you are saying that to me? Pastor, pray for me that I will bring that friend. Yes, thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just do something for the Lord. Let's make our Christmas count. Let's make our Christmas this year count by just sharing that loved one, sharing to that loved one, you know, the meaning of Christmas. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just want to thank you, Father, for these that have raised their hands. And Lord, I know, Father, that, Lord, you will provide that open door for them to bring their loved ones to the service tomorrow and even not even tomorrow god it, it can start today itself it can start today over an over a dinner invite dear lord it can start today itself dear god father over a high tea invite itself and so father i just want to thank you uh, 
uh, for this opportunity, for this uh, many, many occasions that you are challenging us, dear Lord, to introduce Christ to our close friends, to our neighbors, to even our close relatives, dear Lord. I thank you, dear Lord Jesus, dear God, Father, for opening this door for us. And we know, Father, that when you open the door, no one can shut it. Amen? No one can shut the door that has been opened by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, I want to pray for a fruitful Christmas service. Even tomorrow, I want to pray, O oh God, Father, for salvation. I want to pray, O oh God, Father, Lord Jesus, O oh God, that the people that come uh, to the church tomorrow that do not know Jesus, dear Lord, that a seed will be planted, dear Lord, that, Father, they, they, they will have, harvest will take place tomorrow, Father, Lord Jesus, oh God, salvation will be celebrated, dear God, in a powerful way, dear Lord, even as the message, Lord, of Christmas goes forth in power and authority of the name of Jesus. I give you all praise and all glory and all thanks, dear Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, even as we go from this place, dear Lord, may we go in the power of your name. May we go, Father, with the challenge that we have received from your precious word, that your Holy Spirit, dear God, Father, will lead us, dear Lord, Father, to individuals, dear Lord, where your love can be shared, where our testimony, Lord, our transformed lives, Lord, can be shared and Lord, we just pray that, Lord Jesus, that many lives will be touched this Christmas season. We thank you, Father. We give you all praise. We give you all glory. In the name of Jesus, we ask and we give thanks. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Shall we all stand to our feet? Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I have the worship team? Worship team, come. Let's get ready to just worship the Lord even as we close the, our service this morning. Uh, church, you know, I just want to, uh, just want to say, you know, it's a, such a timely message from uh, Pastor Stanley to remind us that Jesus is the reason for the season, Right? Uh, sometimes we can be so busy in our celebrations, we can be so busy doing Christmas that we forgot the Christ. We forgot the Christ in the Christmas. And so I pray that we don't uh, fall into that same, uh, you know, busyness, that we don't, that we don't repeat this mistake. Uh, you know, yesterday I was, uh, I was invited to, me and my family, you know, we were invited to uh, someone's house, uh, one of our church members' house. Uh, they were having a Christmas uh, gathering. Uh, so some of our youth and young adults, uh, they were all there. And, and so I was there. And, uh, you know, I thought it was just going to be a normal Christmas dinner. <laughs> you know, when you get invited to a dinner, you know, you, yeah, okay, we all go, we look forward, you know, to enjoying the time there, the fellowship, you know, the food. But little did I, did, little did I realize, you know what happened? You know, I, was, I was just seated at the, at, at the dinner, after the dinner, you know, uh, the host came to me and says, uh, he, he came to me and says, hey, uh, I have a very good friend since, uh, you know, my, my primary days. And she's here, uh, but she's not well. She has been plagued with, uh, you know, um, one sickness after the other. And, you know, and uh, he says, can you pray for her, Pastor? So I thought, oh, wow. I said, yeah, come for it. I always think, oh, yeah. you know, I, there's pastors, you're on duty all the time, right? So I said, okay, no, no worries. I said, so I said yeah, come, why don't you call her? So when I saw her, actually, you know, I, I could see on her face, you know, she was really down, depressed. I know she, she's sick. She was having heart problem. She was having, you know, her lungs problem. And so I just took the time just to pray for her. And uh, after praying for her, I asked her, how, how do you feel? He says, yeah, Pastor, I feel better. I feel better. I, I, feel, I feel, you know, I feel at least there's some hope. And then I thought that was the end. And then, I, you know, I, I, after praying for her, then uh, when 
when they some of the guests when they saw me praying for this lady afterwards you know a, a couple a sri lankan couple uh, who were uh, the guests uh, i mean who were actually uh, uh, our the host uh, uh, how to say uh, the, they were working for the host their host you know their their, their workers and so they, 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 they saw me praying. They said, Pastor, can you pray for both me and my wife? So I said, okay, what do you want me to pray? He says, no, just pray for us here. We, we, we want you to just pray for us. So I said, okay. So in the middle of that, that, that makan, everybody's makaning. So I, you know, I prayed for them. And just began to minister, just began to release a word of encouragement. And they felt so uh, encouraged after that. And, I, and again, I thought that was over. <laughs> they, after that, you know, their, their son, their eldest son, uh, came just maybe after praying for them, maybe about 10 minutes. The eldest son came and he says, He introduced to me, This is my eldest son, Pastor. Can you pray for my eldest son? I said, Okay, why not? I said, I've been praying for everybody. <laughs> so I said, Let's pray. And also, I called the eldest son, you know, he stood in front of me and I began to pray for him. As I laid my hands on him, he fell under the power of God. And, um, you know, he began to manifest, you know, he began to manifest. He was rolling on the floor and he, you know, he was just, and I I just took the time to pray and, you know, and we just cast out that demon. And it was such a good time when I say it was a good time because all the youth were there. They, were, they got to witness and they got to see what was happening. And they got to pray along. And, you know, as I was praying, they, they didn't just sit at their seat there, you know, to eat, continuing. But they all came together and we began to pray. And, you know, God delivered that boy. I, I want to I tell you, we, we must not miss what God is doing. You, you get what I'm saying, church? I mean, in our busyness, in our celebrations, let's not miss what God wants to do. He came to bring hope. He came to bring peace. He came to bring salvation. He came to set us free. That is, what he, that is why He came. The Bible says he, the Son of God was made manifest. Why was He made manifest? So that He might destroy the works of of the enemy so this Christmas that promise was fulfilled he came so that he can destroy the works of the enemy I tell you friends Christmas is the best time for us and so let's not miss this opportunity all right don't miss this opportunity tomorrow we have Christmas service 10 a.m. we have a service planned out for us but more importantly let's not just come to enjoy the service Bring a friend that needs to hear the good news. Drag the fellow if you still, if you know, do whatever you need to persuade. Do whatever you need to because eternity is at stake. Their eternity is at stake. So do whatever necessary. Amen? Amen? So let's worship God in this song as we, as we close. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. From you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of From you are all things, and to you are all things, you deserve the glory.
Let's worship you. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and through you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are worthy of it all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all from, from you are all things, and through you are all things. You deserve the glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I know time is running out. But uh, I, I, I like to just do this before we go. I just felt the Lord just, just speaking to me. I'm going to close the service. But those of you who need prayer, if you are not feeling well this morning, I would like to pray for you. If you need prayer this morning, I, I don't know what you're going through. But I just felt, you know, that in this Christmas season, there may be some, there may be some who are not, you know, I, can I use the word? They're not really enjoying the Christmas season. They're not really looking forward to the Christmas season. Maybe it's because you have gone through a lot this year. Maybe you have gone through, uh, you know, a lot of difficult time, a difficult period. Maybe you have lost a loved one. Maybe you are, you know, it's, you have got, it, it's a difficult time for you. And maybe Christmas reminds you so much of, uh, you know, the things that you have gone through. Maybe I, I, I just want to pray for you this morning before you go. Asking that the Lord will just anoint you. Asking that the Lord will just give you the joy back. Return that joy back to you. If you're not feeling well this morning, I also like to pray for you. I just felt this morning there are some of us in our midst, you're not feeling well and you are still dealing with a nagging illness. This morning, I'd like to pray for you. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing this song one more time through. Or maybe, can, can we change the song? Can we change the song, the, the, the last song that we sang? We're going to sing this song. If that's you need prayer, you come. And for the rest of us, if you feel that you need to go, uh, let me dismiss you also, all right? I'll dismiss you and you can go. But those of you who need prayer, Will you just come and even as we sing this song so that we can minister to you before you go, alright? So I'm going to just pray and just ask the Lord to bless you. If you need to go, you can go. Uh, but for those of you who need prayer, uh, after, as we are singing this song, as we are worshipping this song, you come, alright? Father, this morning, I thank you for your presence in our midst. Father, I thank you that you are the reason for this season. That God, that we can, Lord, know that you have come and you have come that God that to fulfill your word to fulfill your promises that you are the king of kings and the lord of lords and there's nothing that compares to you this morning lord you you were revealed so that God 
that you may destroy the works of the enemy in our life. So this morning, we thank you and we praise you. Even as your people go from here, may you go with them, watch over them, bless them, strengthen them, bring them back again tomorrow, even as we come and celebrate your birth. Father, Lord, I thank you and I praise you. Lord, this morning, I commit each and every one into their hands. May they go in the peace and the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, I ask and I pray. Amen. If you need to go, please go quietly. But for the rest of us, you need prayer. Don't be shy. Just come forward and I'd like to pray for you this morning before you go. Alright? Can we just sing the song? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that's you, you need prayer, come, alright? Thank you, God. And there Hallelujah. is a king. Thank you, Jesus. Come. Seated among us. Come. Let every heart Ushers, receive leaders. Him now.